So during the day, you tend to be more negative with your tweets and during the night, more positive. I don't really know the reason for that, but hey. Hey guys, so today is our last installment into text classification tutorials and I just watched the raw video for the modified bird and it's a hour and a half long and I just figured you already watched the bird tutorial which is almost an hour long so let's just make a differences comparison between that and the modified model and you should be good to go without watching an hour long video so yeah let's do that and for those of you who watch this for the first time i mean the text classification series what we are doing here is trying to learn how to do text classification on twitter sentiment data that data is sentiment 140 from twitter it has 1.6 million tweets in it and those tweets are annotated as being either negative or positive. Till this day, what we did is we used text to predict the target, meaning the sentiment. And today what you're gonna do is look into another variables such as date and again text itself, but more like upper and lower case usage within that text to try and improve our model and essentially just to make a tutorial how to modify a birth model. So having said that, the environment that we are using is Google Colab. For those of you who don't really know what Google Colab is, here's a video to that. Uh, it's not an affiliate video or whatever, it's just a video explaining how to use Google Colab and it's just a great tool to start learning data science right away. So here are the two notebooks side by side. On the left side, you'll see the birth model and on the right side, you'll see the modified birth model. Uh, these are the graphs of the model structures themselves. And I guess the differences can be seen straight away. So let me just paint on the modified model. So these are the same three inputs we had in the birth model, token IDs, input mask and segment IDs which go then to the birth model itself here. It shows up as one layer but in actuality it's a multitude of layers and then what we see now is an additional layer which we just made up of an additional feature here. So what we do with those two layers, the additional feature layer and the birth output namely this part right here we concatenate both of those so we don't do any calculations and as you can see the input is derived from the pulled output and its number of neurons and then our additional layer what i want you guys to do after watching this is add an additional dense layer right here and then a dropout layer after it and only then connect all of that to the prediction layer at the end. So as you can see in my modified version of the model, there's no additional dense layer, no additional dropout layer. It's the same dropout layer that we had in our birth model. And the thing is why I'm asking you to do this is just for two reasons. One, check out if that improves the model, the accuracy of the model and how it improves it and then just see how easy it is to modify a pre-trained model that you are using and that it's not really any rocket science whatsoever. So having said that, I think I'll just close the birth notebook and we'll go through the modified birth notebook in full screen. Whenever you see new, it's a new addition to the cells that we are using to make this model and uh, you won't see that only in one part which is data because what we do within the data subcategory we check for correlations of different variables so there's gonna be two variables that i'm gonna look into those are the date and the text once again itself within the date we'll try to check if weekday 
has any impact on the sentiment of the tweet and we're gonna check if our has any impact on the sentiment of the tweet within the text I'll look into the upper versus lower case usage within that tweet assuming that people just want to shout in Twitter when they are using caps lock and being negative so having said that let's move to our first contester for an additional variable and it's upper versus lower case usage in tweets and the results are that the correlation isn't really that big uh, but it was the first variable that I used to, to, to check for an additional variable and I said well okay it's fine it shouldn't be that that big of a deal I can move to another one and then I tried weekday so here's the assumption is that you know Mondays are bad days and you want to sleep on Mondays and party on Fridays and to my surprise, it's not the case. On Mondays, you want to party as much as you want to work. And on Fridays, it's even more so. But on Wednesdays and Thursdays, there's three times more negative tweets than there's positive. And, well, I thought to myself that I'm onto something. I checked the correlations. Those, they're more significant than the upper versus lower case usage. But the thing is, if you would do this kind of thing on an actual model which you would use in production, what I suggest you do is check why those two days. Because there's a couple of things here, so the number of tweets is significantly lower. Why is that? Uh, Wednesday and then Thursday, why it's consecutive days? Maybe there was a historical event within the time frame of your data that impacted that and you had just a bunch of negative tweets on those days. So yeah, in real life, check those things as well as the correlation itself. I know correlation is not the best metric to use here and doesn't research your variables deeply enough, but hey, I'm making a tutorial to make a modified model and not on how to select additional variables for your models. So, yeah, after checking the weekday, I was quite happy with it, but I thought to myself, well, I can check the hour as well, since I checked the weekday. And all in all, this plot summarizes it quite well. So, to my surprise, uh, if you would look into the plot, the blue bars are the negative tweets and the orange ones are the positive ones. So during the day, you tend to be more negative with your tweets and during the night, more positive. I don't really know the reason for that, but hey. But the thing with time is that I'm pretty sure that date variable for tweets is the database time and not the persons who tweeted the tweet time. So let's say it's what half past 2 a.m where I live and if I tweeted now on Twitter it maybe would show up as 10 a.m. on the database itself and yeah I thought to myself I can't really use this variable that good as I could use the weekly one just because a day is a much much more longer time period and it should match up with the day when the tweet was posted by the tweeter. And when you look into the correlations, those are lower than the ones from the weekday. But then again, what you could do is separate your day into nighttime and daytime and use those variables and check the correlations then. So after doing all this, I just decided, what the hell, I'll go with weekday. I need a variable, I have one which is quite nice, so let's do this one. And after that, the training and testing split is the same as with BERT model. Label encoding, same. Tokenization, same. Now, input preparation, when we do the, that big function, if you remember on the BERT model, it was this one. This one is different. Uh, why? Well, we have a new variable called weekday. So to include that, what we need to do is transform that variable into class arrays, essentially. 
so one hot encode them. And for that we use label encoder, as we do for our target variable, the sentiment of the tweet. And after that it's quite easy to add that to our input, you already know that you're gonna have four input layers, so we just map our additional feature to our inputs here. We add some variables that you're gonna use to the function itself, so the values of that feature and the amount of classes the feature has. And knowing that, we can do a tensor out of that feature, and this is what we do. And then just map that new feature to our additional inputs, and we are good to go. So this cell right here says it's new as well, but it's just because we use those two additional variables in our input function and we add them here. And after preparing our inputs, we are pretty much finished uh, on the differences. All that's left for us to do now is to add that additional input to our model. So we have our old inputs right here, so input world IDs, input mask and segment IDs. And all we do is just add a feature input right here, then concatenate it with the pulled output on this line. So we get a pulled output from the BERT model, we concatenate it to the feature input that we just created right here. And this one says new just because before that, instead of output, we had pulled output here and here you see that comment that I did before telling you to how about you try adding your tense layer in the model and see how that improves the model itself. You see the thing with neural networks is that the strength of a neural network comes from the multitude of layers that you use. So since you are using multiple layers you can derive complex functions from the neural network. But now, when we have our feature input just concatenated to our pulled output, that feature input goes just through one more layer of calculation at our prediction layer right here. So, to make that model more correct in neural network sense, what you would need to do is have at least another dense layer here to have multiple cal calculations of that new additional variable. So one here and one here. And then you should be able to get a bit of a better result than I did. So yeah, try it out. If you'll have problems, just leave a comment, connect with me on social media. You can find all the links in the description below. And if you'll have problems, I'll help you out. And having said that, that's pretty much all we do. We just map our additional feature to our new feature input and we are good to go, we are good to go with training. So there are some differences in how we work with our inputs in later stages of this notebook, but essentially it's the same, so I won't really go through all of this. Uh, if you watched the bird tutorial, which you can find here, if I haven't added the card yet, you should be good. Uh, just use this notebook, you'll see new comment in every line that something is either changed or new in total and you'll be you'll be good to go and train your new model and that said that's the last installment on our text classification videos uh, we covered logistic regression we covered simple neural network BERT and now modified BERT and you can find all of those notebooks down below in the description, just click the link to the GitHub repo and open up the links within it to Google Colab notebooks, copy those and you can use it freely for whatever you want to. As always, some of the code is mine, most of the code is from the internet, that's just the reality I live in, so I guess you can use it freely. Make some models, if you will. Let me know, just share them with me either in the comments or by any social means possible. And I would be happy, I would be really happy to check them out. And with that said, I hope you liked this video and you click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you really, really soon. Bye. Hey guys, so my microphone is not. Oh,